Hi, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to upholster steps with spindles and achieve beautiful results just like this. This video is brought to you and sponsored by Tools for Flooring and EJ Welch. Tools for Flooring is America's number one online store for all of your flooring supplies and tools. Right where my riser meets my tread, I'm going to make a cut directly from that corner straight over this way. Where my riser corner is, I'll make a cut from there, coming straight out. Same thing here, where my corner is on the top, I'm going to make a cut straight out that way. Straight, okay? These cuts need to be straight. There we go. The front of our riser here is going to be one of our reference points, okay? So, I, because I cut this there, I'm going to use this piece of carpet as a reference point. I'm going to push it up right at the edge of the backing. I'm going to take my ink pen and just put a little mark there, okay? That is going to be one of my reference points. Center of this tread is going to be another one of my reference points. So I'm just going to take and do a little mark right there, okay? I'm going to take that all the way to the edge because that's going to be important for me. Uh, again, this is a reference point, okay? So I'm going to take this. And I'm going to cut it off right there. That's going to get rid of that extra for me, okay? There we go. Exactly. Um, this piece right here, I can actually take to the reference point in the center and cut it directly off at my center reference point right there. I want everything to meet up. Dead center. Now this one is going to be a little different because we want to keep, when this wraps around underneath here, we want it to match back up with this one right here, okay? So I'm going to mark my riser piece right where it comes, right where it meets right there. I'm pulling it tight, making sure I don't have any bubbles or anything like that, and I'm going to put me a little slip right there, okay? Now I have me a mark. I'm going to follow that lines in the back of the carpet right to center point, which is going to be right there, okay? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and relieve this cut. This goes to the center. Now what we got, center of the rip tread, center of the tread, over to where the riser meets the tread, okay? That's our reference points right there. Now I'm going to continue my marks right here. Now I'm going to go from the center. You might want to mark this just so that you can have a good visual. There from the corner of my cut here right to that center piece okay from the corner of my cut here right to the center piece okay from the cut here 45 up to my reference point here okay now if we'll cut out all this extra here 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 and here that's going to fold up perfectly we will have a perfect shape of a W and it'll close all up nicely. So now with this here, we open that up. You can see we have a nice W. When that closes up, watch here. Everything goes together just as it should right there, okay? As this piece comes up here, this piece right here will join right back to the edge of that as well okay so that's why it was important to have a reference point to the bottom of the riser same thing underneath here this same cut is going to follow that cut right around and meet right back up and be a beautiful seam on the bottom okay i'm going to take some of this hot glue and just smear it around like that that way it's on the actual tread and it's going to work like a primer when this glue from the carpet actually meets that glue that I just now put, it's going to create a better bond rather than just having it directly on the wood. 
I'm going to go ahead now and take and put hot glue. You don't want to get too crazy because this stuff will run and get on your fibers, okay? So I'm going to put hot glue on the back of my middle piece of carpet. Notice I'm just smearing it around there, adding a little bit. Because I have it here, it's going to stick really good, okay? So I'm going to take that, push it directly over, watch your fibers, and I'm going to hold it right there. Just give that just a minute to set. I'm going to place a little bit of hot glue right at the edge of this just to seal that cut right there. Again, you want to be extremely careful doing this. Don't overdo it on glue. Just squirt a little bit and spread it around there, okay? Now that I have that, I'm going to treat this piece just like I did that one. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Squirt some glue on there and smear it around. Keeping all my fibers back and out of the way. I'm going to push this piece right up there. Place my seam together. Okay. I'm going to seal this little edge up right here. Being extremely careful not to over glue. Seal this little edge up right here. After that's done, I want to apply hot glue on the back just like I previously did. Notice all my fibers are pulled back out of the way. Again, I'm going to use my row finder, have my fibers back, and just place that seam right where I want it. Now our final step right there is to close this on up, which we got right there. Just a little seal, seal, not much. Again, we don't want to go crazy. And right there. Never can be too careful about your fibers because that's what makes it look good if you don't have any fibers trapped in your glue. You can see our corner point right here and our corner point right here. So what I like to do is take my electric staple gun, pull the fibers back, okay? Now, I only want to do one staple here because you don't want it unsightly. When you push this in, see how that does? It just push... All those fibers that were spread out, when you push the center in, it closes them like that right there, okay? Right on the corner. Now look at the difference that made just from one single staple, okay? I'm going to do that at the top and on the bottom corner. There we go. Take and push this down around tightly with my thumb. And I'm going to get me a mark right where the side of this stringer meets the bottom of the tread right there. Put me just a little slit. Do the same thing about three times. Okay. Now I can pick this up and connect the dots. There. What I want to do with this is double the length from I'm going to push it directly over there flush with the edge of that kind of fill with my finger and cut it right off at the front of the riser here okay so I'm giving myself a double okay right there and I'm just feeling with my thumb Right there. Now I can take this 
fold it back to the riser. You want to keep it uniform. This is the reference point here from this, from my existing step, straight up is what you want, okay? Here, just to close that up. And again, so we don't have staples showing, we're going to put us a hot glue right here on that. Again, smearing that in makes a huge difference. Here, again, we're doing the center of our board, okay? Where I want to make my cut to, I want to check this piece as it comes out the bottom here. I want to fold it up and make it meet on the center mark right there, okay? So I'll push this up. I'm going to give myself just a little mark so I know exactly where to go. Right there. I'm going to do the same thing with the top. That way I got two marks, okay? Push it down here, wherever it meets the center of my step. That's where I want to make my cut to. There we go. To my center point. To my center point. We're going to do a W again from this corner to this point to the center right there from this point to the center from this point to the corner. I'm going to create another W from this point to the corner. And there, once again, we have our W. We'll go ahead and get my primer, so to speak, on this. And again, we're going to start with our centerpiece first. Pushing my thumb here, and then I'm going to use my tool to push that up flat right there. That way I don't have any. I'm using my crane power tacker to do this and again you can pick this up at tools for flooring also last thing we got to do here is trim this and bump it over to this step right here so i'm going to go ahead and put my knife in the crevice here at a 45 degree angle with the naked eye. So that if you feel like you need it, if not, fine. Now I'm going to take my kicker and just bump it over so that I can take my stair tool to this because I always want the sides of my steps to be tucked just like 